Alright, it's time to look at these shiny new toy. Because shooting and throwing daggers wasn't enough, they now get to chuck axes as well. Axe main hand does take some getting used to though, but once you get a feel for the casting animations, you'll start two-shotting most enemies, or even groups of enemies this time around. I've been trying a few different setups and have settled on Deadeye. You could play this build as Daredevil and go all in on mobility instead, but the axe traveling speed makes for some clunky targeting. Using this new weapon does come with a few challenges, most notably the initiative cost. One cast of both axe 2 and 3 is enough for most enemies, but the combo will cost you just over half your initiative. To resolve this, we're gonna pick up Trickery, which grants us 3 extra initiative to play around with and refunds 2 every time we mark a target. And Quick Pockets will refund 3 more whenever we're swapping weapons in combat. To make the most use out of this Grandmaster trait, we'll be equipping our main hand weapon in our first set and our offhand in our second. The other traits will also help maintain swiftness, fury, maximum stacks of might and vigor as well as letting us deal more damage based on our missing initiative. For the second trait line, you have two options. Critical strikes will increase your critical hit chance and damage, help maintain fury and hit targets above 50% HP harder. If you could use some extra sustain, then using invigorating precision will heal you for a percentage of your outgoing critical strikes. This setup will let you ignore Jade Bob protocols, as most important boons are already covered. If you do consistently charge up on protocols though, you could consider using Deadly Arts instead. Part of the damage loss will be mitigated by the ability to stack vulnerability and during meta events will benefit from exposed weakness, which deals increased damage for each condition on our target. The reason I'm mainly playing around with this setup is because of the Grabmaster trait, which allows me to use stolen skills twice and enables me to take all signets instead of having dedicated slots to mercy and a few other active abilities. As mentioned, it's only worth doing this when taking the Jadebot protocols. Critical Strikes makes for a much more well-rounded build. That brings us to the Deadeye Elite spec, which replaces Steel with Mark and lets us deal increased damage to our primary target. Whenever a marked enemy dies, Mark also resets and we gain some regen. Due to the initiative cost of our axe skills, I prefer Malicious Intent, which will start us off with one malice whenever we mark a target. And Payback is the reason why Deadeyes don't really need to worry about Alacrity. Every time our marked enemy dies, all of our healing, utility and our elite skills will have their cooldowns cut by 20%. Our Grandmaster trait does come with a caveat at the moment. Be quick or be killed guarantees permanent quickness and boosts both our power and precision. Maleficent 7 would be an incredible trait when engaging tougher enemies, but right now Axe 3 seems to be removing instead of granting malice. I already hinted at using deadly arts so that I could fill all of my utility with signets. Malice for healing, infiltrator for initiative, agility for precision and assassin for power. Due to their passive nature, it'd be easy to overlook how good some of the active effects are though. Infiltrator Signet is both a stun break and a 1200 range teleport, and Agility is an excellent condition cleanse and refills endurance. But feel free to experiment with the setup. You could use Shadow Step or Shadow Flare for a teleport instead, Haste for some on demand quickness, and if you combine it with the Trickster trait, it can double as a condition cleanse, and Mercy as a way to reset your mark if you're using critical strikes. My favorite elite skill for farming is Dagger Storm, as it lets me hit enemies all around me without having to manually target them, while at the same time evading all of their attacks. If you prefer bringing a personal army, then pick Thieves Guild instead, which can be maintained permanently thanks to Payback's cooldown reduction. The playstyle itself is rather straightforward. Always make sure you mark your target and using Axe 2 followed by Axe 3 will take care of most enemies. Make sure to also weapon swap whenever you can to maintain your initiative. And if you do happen to run low on initiative, you could use 2 or 3 auto attacks followed by Axe 3 instead. Most enemies will be dead before we get a chance to use our stealth attack. But if they do remain alive long enough, make sure to use your stolen skill at maximum malice, as you will get to initiative refunded when landing a stealth attack. Since this is a power build, we're forced to take a pistol in our offhand, which isn't necessarily a bad thing though. Pistol 4 is a spammable crowd control ability which will make short work of any break bar. As for the stats on my gear, I'm running with a mix of Marauders and Dragon's gear, but using Berserker setup works just as well and is preferable if you want to also play instance content. Runes are Scholar or Dragon Hunter, whichever is the most affordable to you. As for the sigils, Force is a nice bump to our damage, and the second one is entirely up to you. If you only have a single set of gear, then Impact is probably the best all-round pick. 
If you do have the luxury of swapping sigils around though, then cleansing is a great way to deal with conditions whenever you're weapon swapping. Or fire or air could add an extra proc to your critical hits, and sigil of blood can help you with sustain. Speaking about sustain, combining a sigil of blood with your signet of malice, invigorating precision, and slices of candy dragon roll should be more than enough to keep you alive in almost every situation. If you've watched my other guides, you'll know that I'm an advocate of Relic of Speed to cut down on time spent traveling between groups of enemies. But your elite skill being on a potentially short cooldown makes alternatives such as the Relic of Ceres a really interesting option as well. There is a balance patch coming on March 19 that will greatly benefit open world thief builds, after which I intend to release a permanent super speed build. So make sure you're subscribed if you don't want to miss it. Any other comments or questions you have down below and don't forget to like the video.